Greetings, greetings, everybody. Happy Sabbath to everyone. This is Brother Mark here with you with Out of the Cities Ministries. I am extremely happy to be with you tonight. And uh, uh, we praise the Lord for his goodness and mercy towards us. Uh, we praise God for another opportunity that we have uh, that we can come together tonight. Let me tell you, Saints, I am extremely uh, happy uh, for tonight's presentation. And, you know, uh, the Sabbath is a good day. I tell you, whenever the Sabbath comes, it reminds us of one creation that indeed that we have an intelligent creator that had created everything. And it reminds us also of redemption because remember, Jesus rested in the tomb for those three days. And on the Sabbath day, he rested as well. So that tells you, that reminds you of redemption. And we know on the new heaven, when we end the new earth, we will be keeping the Sabbath. That's what the Bible says. And God knows we would need the Sabbath, brothers and sisters. That is why he has given us this day that we can come and refresh and we can take a, a rest from all the world, of all the cares of this world and physically rest and, and spiritually we rest in Christ. So we, we praise God for, for the Sabbath day. And I'm so thankful that we all can go through another another week safely and we can be all together once again tonight. Let me tell you, saints, um, pray for tonight's presentation. Pray for tonight's presentation because we know the enemy, the enemy does not like what we're about to do. The enemy doesn't like to hear, doesn't like it when God's people are uh, being exposed to these kinds of uh, um, testimonies. So we know for a fact that the devil will try. He has already tried and he will try some more uh, to uh, hinder those who really want to hear this presentation. He will try his best to hinder it so that they don't hear it. But let's pray that uh, the Lord give us favor. Pray that the Lord give us favor. Again, saints, if you're watching for the first time, this is Brother Mark here with you with Out of the Cities Ministries. Uh, we do this every Friday night. If it's uh, happened to be for the first time you're watching this, I encourage you to um, go back on our channel. You will, see, you will find many other presentations that will be a blessing to you and to your family. So saints, welcome. Those, wherever you're watching, please be, be sure to share this with others. Uh, for we believe that this indeed will be a blessing to you and to your family. So without further ado, let us uh, say a word of prayer before we get started. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you once again for allowing us to be together tonight in front of your people doing a presentation. That is something that we don't deserve. We don't deserve the favor that we have been uh, granted father please be with us tonight speak to us that we may speak to others remove everything that's not that's not of you in us and teach us may tonight's program be a blessing to somebody we pray father that you would put your words in our mouths please lord you've done it in the past and i know you will do it again be with our guest may everything go well May everything go according to your will and you and at the end will be careful to give you all the praise and honor and glory. Thank you so much for all you have done, I pray in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Again, saints, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. Thank you. I want at this time want to welcome. I want to welcome um, our guest at this, at this very moment. Uh, Sister Candice, I am so happy to uh, have you with us tonight. I want to say greetings to you. Greetings to your family. How's everybody doing? We are so happy to have you. Thank you so much. It's really nice to be here. And I gave all the praise and all the thanks. You know, I was I was once a person looking on this channel and saying, wow, this is a mighty week. I wonder if I'll ever be there one day Amen. to share. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise, the Lord. Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Yes. Um, for some reason, I am hoping that the echo is not too bad. Um, uh, uh, I want to make sure that the folks can hear you well. Um, right. Yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, we have no issues. Again, Saints, welcome everybody. This is, we're here live with our good friend Candice. Um, and she will be sharing with us uh, really her life testimony in a sense. We can say that it's really her life testimony that the Lord has um, has given her. So she will be sharing that with us. So this whole uh, presentation is to show you how powerful God is and how God can change the lives of anybody. Anyone uh, who's willing, uh, the Lord can change you. And, you know, let me say this. One of the biggest uh, argument that we have as Christian, and nobody can, can, can say it, is a changed life. You know, sometimes people say, well, how do you know the Bible is true? How do you mm. know? Yeah, how do you know? Okay, this is something that men wrote and from years ago. And how can how can I know I can use that now? That is relevant to me now. How can I know this book is 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 what it what you guys uh say it is? How do I how can I even trust it? Let me tell you something. The biggest argument I believe we have is a changed life. Listen. If the Lord changed somebody and you, everybody used to know who that person was and then they totally change, who can gainsay it? Who can say, well, it didn't happen? I mean, you have a living testimony. <laughs> so I really believe this, you know, having a, a changed life is one of the most powerful argument in favor of Christianity. I really, I really believe that. So uh, that's enough of me talking. We're here to uh, we're here to hear you, my sister. So, talk to us. Tell us a little bit about um, uh, as we get to know you, because I know a lot of people that are watching may may see you, may see the name, but may not you know um, know who you are. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your background, growing up, your childhood, uh, where did you grow up? Tell us a little bit about that as we get into um, more of the discussion. Okay, sure. So. I was born and raised on an island, Trinidad and Tobago, to an island. Mm -hmm. But I'm from Trinidad, South Trinidad to be exact. And I grew up in a very loving home with my um, parents and siblings. And we had an extended family. So actually right now while we speak, um, my entire family, as they are at our childhood home, um, celebrating the fact that... Um, God has, you know, built that house, helped them build that house probably 38 years now. And um, I grew up in a Catholic home in terms of um, our background was Catholic, mm -hmm. Catholicism. Uh, my father was the lead guitarist in the church. Um, my mother and father, they have a beautiful love story where... Um, she came to the church um, by some nuns, and he was already there, established. Mm -hmm. They liked each other, fell in love, and um, they remained in the choir together. And some years later, birthed me. So I'm the second of, of five children. And um, childhood was very fun, full of life, energy, until the year 2000. And that was the year, um, it was the 27th of January, 2000, probably in the wee hours of the morning, um, I found out that my father was, has been killed, well, died in a vehicular accident. Oh, wow. And nobody could have really explained to us what happened. Wow. Um, Everything just went by very fast for me. I remember that morning, my mom was coming through the gate with police officers and everyone from our village was just coming to our home. And I was just very confused. I was nine going on 10 at the time. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, that morning, 
I was prepared to tell my parents a lie that um, I was feeling sick um, because I had a, a math a math mental test that day, mm -hmm. and I was trying my best to to get away from it, not knowing that the day when I was about to make up this lie mm. that I would be three months home, um, waiting to prepare to bury my father and go through this whole grieving process. Um, wow. So everything shifted from there, and um, I felt like I, I went from 9 to 19 because I had to grow up really quickly and deal with all of these different things. But um, I think that is where the enemy hit me, mm -hmm, a really mm -hmm, big mm -hmm. arrow, because everything from there just went spiraling. And I mean, we'll talk more about that, but mm -hmm. in terms of my background and my upbringing, I came from a really respectable home, really good morals and values, but everything shifted when my father died. And and, and that, that, at that time, you were like very young, very, very young. You said, you said nine? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I was nine going on ten. Wow, that and, um, must have been tough. And the doctor said that the accident was so bad, he was bleeding internally, that even if he did live, he probably would have been a vegetable. Like, he wouldn't mm. be able to um, talk to us and interact. Wow. So, yeah. Wow, that is sad. I'm so sorry to hear that. Wow. You know, uh, talking about, you know, being nine years old and um, having your parent, your dad die, that must have been, oof. That was tough. That was, I'm, I'm sure. So at that time, uh, but he was, he, he was, when he died, you, he, he was still uh, um, part of the of Catholicism? Yes, very much so. Very much so. Yeah, he was, um, I think my father, um, music is a big thing in our family. And my father used music as a way to not just connect with God, but deal with the stresses of life. Like he was a, a young father mm. um, with children and a wife, and he was really trying to make it. He said he wanted to like um, retire at age 40, and he died at 38. So wow. it just goes to show that, you know, we have all these plans, but God God knows how everything is going to end, you mm -hmm, know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, wow, that is uh, that stuff. But but as far as as far as you know, in the home, like you said, it was a very respectable home, uh, with with values. And okay, would you say there's some things that you learned when you were young that you can see now you can apply in your life, like as far as principles that your parents have instilled in you? Yeah, I, I I'm very thankful that I always knew God existed and. Um, God love me. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, some of the things. So from my father, I learned that you need to work really hard for what you want because mm -hmm. he was an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and a businessman. And from my mom, I learned that, you know, the strongest thing in the world is love, love for God and love for people. So I always had that um, growing up. I think um I also got a, a space to express myself when I was really young. So it was not hard to try to navigate life and the challenges of life. But when my father died, that is when I felt silenced. I felt muted. I felt like a huge part of me was taken away. And I, and I, I didn't think that I was going to be able to see brighter days. Everything just felt very dark. Everything felt like it was at a standstill while still moving quickly. So um, for me today, I could definitely see that um, my mother was always a, a calm person. She mm -hmm. never really worried much. Um, and she was very prayerful, just still very prayerful person. But what was really challenging for me I never saw my mother cried until mm. the day of the funeral. Wow. And after that, I still didn't see her cry. So I I always saw her crying as, huh, this is not something that you should be doing because mm. my mother lives a happy life. And, um, you know, you should be happy. And the world is full of rainbows, you know, and butterflies. Mm -hmm. And I think. Of grieving and dealing with the grief 
but she dealt with the grief behind closed doors mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she showed us the strong side of her but i i struggled with the fact that how do i stay strong when the person in terms of my father who is the strongest person i know is not right. gone mm. you know yes yes yeah. yes wow wow that's 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 that, that must have been tough i mean i can't even imagine you know being so young and having to deal with with such a thing so now uh, you mentioned uh the aftermath of of the death of your fa- of your father so uh uh you also mentioned like uh, depression and 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 those you know those kind of bad thoughts coming to your mind you know how, how talk, yeah. talk talk about that a little bit as a result of the death of your of your father so after my father died i thought catholicism was the only religion in the world like i didn't think like I knew Muslims mm-hmm. were there, Hindus were there, but I didn't understand that there were different denominations mm-hmm. under the umbrella of Christianity. So, because we were so sheltered, this that was all we knew, you mm-hmm. know. So I, um, after he died, my mother took took us to the Pentecostal church for counseling because they gave us free counseling mm-hmm. at the time, and I was very intrigued as to, wow, there's another there's another group of people who worship God that I didn't know about and wow. that piqued my interest. Mm-hmm. So I start, So I went on this quest, unknown to everybody, that I am going to search for God mm-hmm. outside of what everybody was teaching me and what I knew. So, um, so out- it started outside pause. of Catholicism, in yes, a way, in a sense. Yes, outside of Catholicism. Mm. So I became, um, I went to the Pentecostal church, a few years after I got baptized, I was 16 years old. And for the first time, I never knew that there were so many other things to know about God and mm-hmm. about worship mm-hmm. um, outside of what I knew in the Catholic Church. And it was really hard because um, most of my family is Catholic. And for us, me and my family, my siblings and my mother leaving, um, it sort of rubbed them the wrong way because it represented the foundation my father tried to establish mm-hmm, and we moved mm-hmm. away from that. Um, I only have one sibling that remained in the church. That's my eldest brother. And I tried to explain to persons, all of us were like, you know, seedlings, but my, right. my brother's roots were really deep and strong, so it was really hard to uproot him and plant him somewhere else. Um, it was the first time I, when I got baptized, it was the first time I actually started to read the Bible on my own for myself. When you um, when you I got baptized really to what, a Pentecostal church? Yes, in a Pentecostal church. Wow. I didn't know what it was like to read the Bible and mm-hmm. have your own relationship with God. I just felt like the priest or the the leader at the time, he was the one to go on our behalf. But now that I learned that I could just go straight to God, that was a whole different mm. world for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, um, I don't know how much you know about the Pentecostal church, but after you get baptized, the next step is being baptized with the Holy Spirit. In, uh, the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And that is when things took a whole nother level for mm. me because... I was asked, do you want to receive the Holy Spirit through the mm-hmm. through the evidence of speaking in tongues? And right. I was like, yeah, I want everything. I didn't I didn't sign up for part of this. I want everything. Mm-hmm. So one Sunday after church, a group of ladies, they called me to the altar. They started praying with me. They started speaking in tongues. They they you know they told me, keep 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 calling Jesus' name, keep saying hallelujah, keep saying amen. And I don't know what happened, but before I knew it, something was coming out of my mouth Mm. and it was so fluid. It was almost like a language I was speaking that I didn't even know that I could speak. Mm. And, and that made me question more because I was like, if, if this is what I'm being exposed to, what else about this whole Christian experience that I didn't know. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. is what caused me to 
even question more and seek more. And I had so many answers, so many questions, and no one could have explained to me what happened to my father. Um, where is he? Mm -hmm. Is he in heaven? Mm -hmm. Is he in hell? Mm -hmm. Is he in purgatory? Because um, for those who don't know, purgatory is this, is like a waiting bay, like a holding spot for, you know, until pers until God could decide where to put this person's soul right. or where they have their final resting place. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to you all from my 16-year-old mind, 9-year-old mind. I was just going through a lot trying to figure out who is this God? What, what about him I don't know? And what do I still need to know? And when I started speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. that became my evidence that I was walking with God and oh, God was with me. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, I'm glad you kind of mentioned the speaking in tongue part. So. And I didn't even plan to, to say this, but it just came out. <laughs> and think about it, right? Like. Uh, how is it like? It, do, do you, you, you said that you feel like something came over you and you like speak in some language, but you don't know what you're saying, right? Is that, you don't know what no. you're saying. No. And, and is somebody translating or interpreting what you're saying or not really? No, everybody is just speaking their own version of tongues mm -hmm. in a chorus as we, we try to figure out this thing, you know, and try to figure out the, the Holy Spirit presence that at that time, I felt that the tongues at the time, I was still grieving my father, mm -hmm. that I just was happy that I found a uh, avenue of escape, escape. to feel mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am being transported to a spiritual realm other than the reality that I was going through at the time because I was hurting so much. Mm. So there was a lot of emotion. There was a lot of um, my imagination was just going all over the place because I was just thinking that, hey, now I am. Um, there was a little bit of pride in it, too, because I felt like now I was above everybody else who wasn't able to speak in tongues. Oh. And I was now closer to God than I was mm. before. So I felt like I went on a whole different level when I started to speak in tongues. And mm -hmm. I didn't even understand that it needed to be interpreted or it needed to be an actual language that mm -hmm. persons could identify with. I just knew that this thing was taking the pain away from my chest and I was able to speak in a language that I thought it was a groaning that God could translate because mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. grieving my father so much. Wow. So like you said, yeah. it, it was in a sense, it was a, a, a way of escape, but yes, you, you, you never really dealt. Now, did you find, did you, did you find that, um, being in a Pentecostal church and, um, speaking in tongue and feeling that you're closer to God, did, did, did you feel in a sense you have, you find true healing or you you still feel like mm, there were still things that you didn't you didn't you you know that was not dealt with. Or did you find like yeah? You know, did you find true peace really or true healing uh, going to that church? I felt I felt like it was like a drug, like a relief, a temporary relief mm. until I could figure out what is true from what is not true. Mm. But but no one at that time could have told me that. I didn't know God or I wasn't close to God, but there was also some part of me that was saying something is missing, but I'm not going to question it because now I'm speaking in tongues. Uh, so now I know God is with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, oh, man, this is, this is, oh man, this is deep. So you dealing with this, it's kind of like you said, it's kind of like a drug, but did that in any way lead you to, actual drugs did, did that did, did it lead to that uh, or yes. finding a way to escape did, did it is that part of talk to us yeah, about that so i um my grief was so strong that i had to find every human possible way to escape my reality that i no longer have my father and i have to deal with all the different moving parts that was happening so um 
while I was, you know, I, I'm baptized, I'm serving in church, mm-hmm. I'm in the mime ministry, I'm mm-hmm. in drama ministry, mm-hmm. I am in prayer meeting. I, I never miss church, you know. And then one day, there was this program to help you become a better evangelist. And the, the pastor at the time, the Pentecostal pastor at the time, he said something that really rubbed me the wrong way. You know, he said the Lord is guiding him to go in a secular environment to reach p- persons. And I got up and I said, because I was always questioning stuff. I said, mm-hmm. doesn't the Bible say it, light and darkness couldn't mix? And he felt really offended. Mm. And I was pulled aside and I was asked to apologize. If I can't apologize, then, you know, I wouldn't be able to continue the class anymore. Whoa. I never told my mom and I never told anyone because I didn't want anybody to blame the church for me mm-hmm, leaving. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How old, what's, what's the age we're talking here? What's the age? I was um, probably, at this point, I was like 18 going on 19, Okay. right? Because I was serving in church for a while, and then I decided I'm going to leave the Pentecostal church and go somewhere else. And, because and, and, and the reason for that is because of this uh, particular uh, incident. Yeah, the incidents with the pastor. I felt that they didn't handle it properly. Mm-hmm. They could have found another way, but um, I just felt that they were trying to protect his reputation and not call sin by its right name. Right. Mm, mm, and um, mm, mm, mm. so I left and um, I was struggling to keep my grades up at school. So a teacher told me, Candace, you're so talented. Why don't you go to university and study theater arts? Mm. And that was my own. That was my last opportunity of proving to my family that I wasn't a failure. So I I dropped out of school and I went straight to university, and to get into this particular program, I had to audition. So I created a character, which was myself, which made it very easy to play. It was this depressed girl who lost her father, Mm. and the lecturers were so blown away, they said, yeah, we're going to accept her into the program. Wow. And when I got into university, that is when... All hell broke loose. Mm, like mm. I call it a world of vices because I was so sheltered and guard, like guarded. I didn't understand what the out, outside world was about. Mm. And that is when I was introduced to marijuana. <sighs> I was introduced to alcohol. Mm. I was introduced to, to gambling, but I knew gambling was wrong. So I said, um, let me do everything else that no one could see because I could drink by myself. Right. I could smoke by myself, but mm-hmm. but I can't gamble by myself, you right. know? Right. So um so while everybody thought I was at UE studying for a degree, I was wasting it away. UE is stand, UE stands for the University of the West Indies. Yes. It's one of the biggest universities in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's one in Jamaica, one in Barbados, and one in Trinidad. So I got accepted into the program, and for the first time, I thought I was free because I was away from church, away from my family, living on my own for the first time. And knowing that these things were wrong, but for some reason, there was always a voice in my head saying, you can't say something is wrong unless you have proved it's wrong. Mm. And when I started to when I started to smoke and drink, there was nothing in it that made me feel that it was wrong because it was helping me relax. Mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm, helping mm-hmm, me mm-hmm, to be mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. soothe my my pain. So um when I left, nobody could have, you know, judged me after this because I could now have my own identity and have my own life. But God was always after my heart, like Amen. throughout it all. And he always used a meal to get my attention. Amen. So while I was at university, there was this guy who I had a huge crush on from the Pentecostal church. Mm-hmm. Um, so apparently the first week of 
uh, of orientation for school. They have these different booths and these different organizations that will come, you know, help you start up a bank account, talk to you about insurance and stuff right. like this. And this guy, he was at a, a booth for church. And mm. I was like, oh my gosh, I remember you. What are you doing here? He said, well, you know, I left church and now I'm a part of this new church. Mm. And I said, I was like, wow, you're part of this new church. Tell me more. And I wasn't really interested in the church. I was interested in him. But because he was interested in church, I said, I'm going to go with him. And at, so, at that time, were we still talking 20, early 20s? or Yeah, early 20s. Okay. Early 20s. And, um, <laughs> and, 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 and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to miss this uh, before you continue with that. So the purpose of you going to that university is so that you can, in, in a sense, I guess, be a, a movie star or is that what we're. Yeah. I wanted to become a full-time actress. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now you met okay. him. The reason he came, he had a booth representing a church. So now you're getting, you, you talking to him. Yeah, I started talking to him and, you know, we started, you know, connecting and stuff. But he was passionate about me being saved and knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. And I translated that passion into him being interested in me. Got it. So I started to go to church. Um, Is I never that still, Pentec church. still Pentecostal church? What kind of church? So it wasn't Pentecostal. But it was called like it was one of those reformed churches, right? So it's a reformed church where it's similar to Pentecostal, but they have different traditions, right? And funny enough, it was at that church where I started to read books mm. about Martin Luther. Okay. And certain reformers mm -hmm, in church mm -hmm, history mm -hmm. but i had no clue what god was doing with me at the mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. it so turned out that um i got baptized again a second time right at this church at, the, at, at this, this church. new church mm -hmm. and this church really welcomed me as a family they gave me all the love i was fed well mm -hmm. spiritually and physically and um I thought that this was my new life and I would somehow get married to this guy and settle down and we would be in this new church. It so happened that he got a girlfriend and um, because I didn't want it to look obvious, I remained in the church. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point in time, I was still back and forth dealing with a secular relationship that I was involved in. But I didn't want anybody to know about it um, because as an actress, I knew how to hide certain aspects of my life. Right. So I knew how to be different personalities. I knew how to show up of different versions of myself. Mm -hmm. And I knew how to block my mind from one reality and present another so that my, my, my goal was always to be the good girl. Mm -hmm. Because I am Larry's and Johanna's daughter, and they are good, upstanding citizens, so I have to keep that reputation yes. as much as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I struggled with it. And um, this guy didn't know I was smoking and drinking. Um, nobody really knew. And then um, <laughs> I started to fall behind in my schoolwork, and mm. the results started to show. And um, I remember this one day, I, I had to pass this course. If I didn't pass this course, I would be kept back an extra year. And um, my friend at the time, my classmate, her motto was, look like Barbie, smoke like Marley. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, we, we said we're going to smoke like Bob Marley and we're going to get high and hopefully... By smoking, it will calm our nerves and, and increase our memory. And um, wow. God, God's grace alone, I passed that course. Hmm. But I was still dealing with um, my addictions to um, just, just living a very reckless life in terms of 
meeting new people, trusting them, hanging out in the wrong company. Right, right, um, right. But for some reason, um, people will see me and they will say, you don't really belong here, but you're keeping us entertained, so we're going to oh, keep you around. Wow, wow. And, yeah, and at so, that time, do you do you have any connection at all with, the, with your family? Um, I would see my family probably twice a month, sometimes once a month, sometimes months pass. Mm-hmm. But they, they never knew what was going on with me while I was up there. Mm-hmm. They, um, they never knew. And is it a good distance they just, where they live to, to, to where do you go to university? Yeah, it's a long, it's about an hour and a half drive. Okay. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, I was, I was living on my own. I was living with a lot of different roommates, people from different walks of life. And I was just trying to find my identity. I uh-huh. was just trying to fit in. I was just trying everything under the sun. Right. Um, when when the tongues praying and tongues didn't work, I tried drinking it off. When drinking mm-hmm. it off didn't work, I tried smoking it off. When those things didn't work, um, I just isolated myself from everyone and I went into these extreme lifestyle changes. So at one point in time, I used to dress like a hippie. Like wow. I would have these long flowing skirts dragging on the floor and my head tied up. And I would try to impersonate like this person who is on this spiritual journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was just really messed up because I couldn't really figure out who I was. Um, I felt like I had lost my way. I felt like my father died and shift that identity foundation. And um, it was really hard to talk about my father's death for my family. So for years, <laughs> we didn't really have long conversations about him. I didn't really have much pictures with him and I. So everything just felt like one big nightmare and a dream, you know, wow. and I was just searching and searching. So it so happened that um, the pastor and I at this new church, we had a disagreement Mm-hmm. And I left. So this was church number two, leaving. You leave, you leave that church, wow. Yeah, I left the church and I just said, I'm just going to do life on my own. I'm just going to mm-hmm. do whatever I need to do. And it so happened, um, during all of this, I went into a major depression. Wow. Um, it started step by step by me. Stop. I... I because I had to, you know, play catch up with my my grades and my courses, I felt like eating took up too much time. Mm. Then it went to the extreme of taking long showers take was taking up too much time. Mm. And I went into um, spending time with friends and family was taking up too much time. So I lived in the library. I did all night studies. Hmm. I didn't. I wasn't sleeping properly. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't eating, and it so happened that my body became so depleted wow. of minerals and vitamins that my brain started to shut down. So hmm. simple things that I'm supposed to remember, I start forgetting. Um, I stopped combing my hair after a point in time, and then it got so bad that um. I would just be looking blank, stare at people mm, and not mm, recognizing mm. who they were. You know, it felt like I had this big block mm-hmm. in my brain. And even though I could see, I couldn't understand anything that was happening around me. I wasn't aware. And my family said, you know, Candace, you probably need a break from school. Right. And I, I remember going to the university psychologist and she said, Candace, do you know who you are? And I was just staring at her. I couldn't answer her. And I'm telling you this, and it's almost like I'm seeing it now. I I just used to stare at her, and Mm -hmm. I didn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. And it had gotten so bad that um, they said, you know what, Candice? Your health is very important to us and to your your classmates, your your colleagues. So we're going to give you one leave of absence. You're going to go home for one year, but you have to make sure and go for counseling. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I started to use antidepressants. And the antidepressants, it made things worse. Wow. You know, um, I started to hear voices. I wow. started to... Um, I started to have suicidal thoughts because mm. the because when you don't eat properly, your your intestines, your your gut health is off whack. So sometimes you eat, you bring back up the food, it doesn't stay. Wow. And the food finds every imaginable space to exit your body because your brain is not settled and you're just out of whack. I remember I used to take pens like and write scriptures on the wall because I was crying out for God in this way that I thought I could have and to no avail mm -hmm, anything mm -hmm. was happening for me. So um, fast forward to that, my brother came to me and he said, this is my eldest brother. He said, Candace. And at that time, you you, you you off from from school for a little while. Yeah, and, and I'm back home. You're back home, but you still you still plan to go back to school to continue your, yes, your studies. Yes, I had two more years. I had one more year, sorry, to finish. Yeah. Okay. And um, so my brother said, Every, everybody's baby in you. Everybody is, you know, feeling sorry for you, but you need to shake out of this. You need to wake up. I'm going to send you for counseling. And he sent me for counseling, and the counseling really helped. Mm -hmm. And then um, I stopped the counseling, I went back into a relapse. And everything in my mind sometimes is like a blur because I've been through depression so many times. It's like I've lost track of what happened mm -hmm. and when. But what I do know is my mother decided to take me off the antidepressants and she she carried me back to the same Pentecostal church where, where it the all started The first one, for the me. very, very the first, first one. The first one. So wait, at that because time, your mom is, is not uh, uh, Catholic anymore? She's now Pentecostal? No. Yeah, she, oh. she went back to the Pentecostal church. So okay. it was the, myself and the rest of my siblings, but only my eldest brother remained a Catholic. And she carried me back to the church mm. and she carried me to a pastor who, when he saw me, he looked at me like, wow, how did she end up here? Mm. Like he looked at me like I was a ghost. And what he told me was this. He said, there was some years ago, mm -hmm. the Lord told me this young lady needs a father figure. And he said he was afraid and he ran. He ran from trying to help mm. me at the time. And it so happened that I came back full circle in his office. And what my mom did, she carried me to his office every single day. It's almost like he was the daycare. Because wow. because nobody could have taken care of me at the time. She carried me every day to his office. And all he would do is read the Bible to me. Mm -hmm. Read the Bible. Because I couldn't. I couldn't have a, a, a normal conversation. My mind always was warped. Like nothing was making sense at what I was saying. He just read the Bible and prayed, mm -hmm. read the Bible and, and prayed. prayed. Right. And after a couple of months, the depression, like a cloud, it just went away. It went away. Like the word of God transformed my mind wow. so powerfully that... It was able to drown out all the negativity, all the darkness. It just went, you know, and um, I'm so thankful to him for that. And he really, he really thought that, you know, Candace would remain this time. And then I went again. Oh. I'm a runner. So I get healed, I get help, and I run again. Wow. And this time, this time in running... I decided to go deeper into drama in a deeper way, you know. So you didn't go back of, to the you didn't go back to the university. Yeah, so I went back to school after one year of mm -hmm. the break. I went back to school, mm -hmm. but I made sure I took every opportunity I could to um, to develop my career in acting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So there was this one moment I got this opportunity to fly abroad and um I'm going to leave out certain details because I don't I don't want certain persons to feel offended mm -hmm. by it. I got you. But um I was asked to play this role that 
I did not realize I was actually dabbling hmm. in the world of darkness. Wow. And um, I got so deeply involved that my voice didn't just change. It was like I was a different ethnicity. Oh. My, my body felt different. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing a particular role that called for me to be very focused and disciplined. And that is when I realized that there was a part of this world that I didn't fully understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure you all could read between the lines. Mm -hmm. um, there were conversations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. voices that were having with me. Hey, wow. we could give you everything you want. Mm, mm, mm. We could make this process so much easier for you. We could put you in your bright lights. And I started to listen to these voices deeply. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one night, <laughs> wow. one night, this a guy from he's from Nigeria, but he 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 left Nigeria and he's living in this new country that I'm in now mm -hmm. for the first time. And he said, "Candice, when last have you prayed?" Mm. And I just started to cry. And for the first time, when I opened my mouth to pray, I heard a voice that was full of innocence and peace that I have not heard in years. Mm. It resembled my nine-year-old self trying to speak to God, trying for healing. But, Brother Mark, this, this thing was so tough for me that, yeah. you know, I'm just praying and asking God, God, wherever you want me to go with this testimony, go, because I have not spoken about this for years. Mm -hmm. And it's all coming back to me like a flash. Mm -hmm. And I remember that moment I said, God, I don't know who I am. Please help me. That was my prayer. Right. I right. don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. Please help me. After that, fast forward, I went into another bout of depression. And the depression became so bad that from my head to my waist, I couldn't move because the stress, mm. the stress on my body and my nervous system had was just shutting down. Wow. Um, I remember I woke up one morning to grab my jacket and I was, this was me. I was frozen, like I couldn't wow. move. And it wow. so happened that the same church I left, the second church that I left, uh -huh. Family there decided to take me in and take care of me for some months. The same church, that, the same church, the same church that had the guy that you that you that you 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 yes. saw that came with the booth. Okay, wow. Yes. Wow. So they they heard of what was happening. They took me in, and um, I'm hearing some feedback on my side, but I'm going to try to ignore it. Um, they took me in, and wow. um. I went back to school, but while while I was in that position, I was so helpless. I couldn't do anything for myself. And I remember saying this prayer. I said, God, if you could give me the strength to finish school, I will do things differently this time. I will serve you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember I started back to pray. I would visit different churches, but never really stay in one particular church. But it will it will be a Pentecostal church. They call it full gospel. And I remember I was not leaning on my own strength anymore. I was depending on God to, to help me finish university because university was like a never-ending nightmare right. for me. Kid you not, when I went back to university, I completed my, my program. My The head lecturer called me in the room. He said, Candice, look at this. Mm. You are six credits from graduating with first class honors. Wow. You have been through a lot. I want you to finish and finish well. And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. I graduated with full first class honors, top of my class, overcame the depression. I, I stopped um, smoking wow. and drinking at the time. Wow. And God was gradually 
repairing my mind because mm-hmm. I had damaged so much mm-hmm, 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 from mm-hmm, everything mm-hmm. that was happening. I graduated. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to, you know, um, ask God what to do from here. And something happened to me after I graduated. Mm. I got into teaching. I started to teach drama. And when I got into teaching, I told God, I said, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to do life ever with you, without you anymore. I remember the depression came back. It visited me again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And this time I had three pastors on speed dial. And when I called them, they knew it was because I wanted to kill myself. But calling them meant that they just had to pray. They knew if Candace calling, it's because she's in a really bad place. So uh-huh. I had three pastors on speed dial. Uh-huh. If I didn't get one, I called the other. And that's how I was going for months. Until one day, God woke me up like five o'clock in the morning and I just felt impressed to put on my clothes and go to work. When I got to work, the security guard was like, Miss Andrews, Mm. I wasn't married yet. Miss Andrews, why are you here so early? I had no clue. I got into my classroom and locked the door and I cried out to God on my knees. I said, Lord, if you don't save me now, I'm going to die. I'm going to kill myself. The enemy is going to laugh at me. Mm-hmm. And he's going to say, you see, mm-hmm. look, you mm-hmm. didn't come true for mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. That same day, I went on Facebook and I saw a post. And when I saw the post, it was not like anything I ever saw mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought I was reading my Bible. I thought I knew And that post, it, I was like, God, what is this Sunday and Sabbath? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I felt more confused. I felt God was freeing me, Mm. but I was still enslaved by something. And I said, God, something is missing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I saw this post, I said, Lord, I need to find out more about this. Again, God knows how to get our attention. Yes. Because yes. the post was posted by another guy mm. who looked very attractive. And I said, wow, this could be my escape. And I want to put something in here. Mm-hmm. When you when a young girl loses her, her father, she looks to every male to try and get that father back. Yes. She looks for that comfort. She looks for that reassurance. So for me, I didn't really want a boyfriend. I wanted a father. And I was looking to every male for that support. It so happened that this guy posted about the Sabbath. And I said, God, this is the moment for me to find somebody who knew something I didn't know about the Bible Mm -hmm. and for me to get closer to you and for me to finally find somebody who loved me for me Mm -hmm. and wasn't taking advantage of me. So I remember I messaged the... I messaged the guy and I said, hey, you posted something about the Sabbath. What is that about? By the way, at this time, I was age, let me tell you, Mm -hmm. I was 26. 26, okay. And this is the post, this is the post you saw. Yes, this is the exact post I saw. Seven and one. And I saw people pointing at the one and they weren't looking at the seven. And I was like, what is this? This don't make any sense to me. So I um, started to talk to him and we talked for a couple of days. Let's say we started to talk Monday by the Friday. I was like, hey, what you're saying sounding like it's making sense, but I want to experience it for myself. Mm -hmm. So in one mind, I wanted to experience it, but in the other mind, I wanted to meet him. Right. Right. So I told him. But you don't know where he, you don't know, do you know where he lives at at that time? I didn't know anything about him. Okay. This is a post on Facebook. All I knew is that he was mutual friends with my eldest brother and they went to the same school. Mm -hmm. But I never saw this guy in my life. I don't know where he's from. Mm -hmm. I I don't know anything about him. And I just started to have this conversation with him. And then I told him, here's what, I don't want to keep you too late because tomorrow is your Sabbath. And he said, no, 
today is the Sabbath of the Lord. And I was like, this guy is confused. Oh, you were talking to him on a Saturday. Yeah, I was I was talking to him Friday night, telling him that oh, his Sabbath yeah. is tomorrow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and he mm-hmm. said, no, Sabbath has already <laughs> begun. And I said, this guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's confused. Let me figure this out for myself. So I took a bold step of faith and mm-hmm. I said, here's what. I've heard enough. I want to see it for myself. You come and take me to church. That was my response. Mm-hmm. And he said, sure. I sent him my lo- my address. I told him where I lived. And he was going to pick me up the next day. Mm. So all I, I was like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? I don't know this guy. What am I going to do? Right. So Saturday morning comes. Wow. My mom is busy cooking. I'm supposed to be cleaning out the house. And I'm just frantically looking for clothes, looking for clothes. Because remember, I haven't been to church in a while. Right, at that time. You know, right. I was just going in and out. Mm-hmm. So my, sh- my my longest dress was like a few inches above my knee. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want to look like the best church girl he has ever seen. So I put on the longest dress I had. Um, um, and then I was like, okay, I heard he's Adventist. I think they don't wear jewelry. You know what? Let me just be safe. Don't go with no jewelry. Mm-hmm. Just, just try to look as natural and pure as possible. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mother was like, Candace, where are you going this morning? I was like, to church. She was like, on a Saturday? I say, yeah. She's like, who are you going to church with? I'll just say, for now, brother A. I was like, brother A. She's like, where did you meet this brother A? Mm-hmm. I said on Facebook. And then I heard he blow the horn and he was in my garage wow. waiting to pick me up. So I knew if I didn't get out that door in time, my mother would say something to turn, turn change my mind mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. going to church with mm-hmm. him. So I knew I had to just, I said, mommy, when I get to the church, I'll send you the location. I'll send you his name and number, but I have to go. I'm late. I get into this guy's car and all of a sudden my extrovert went introvert real, real quick. Mm-hmm. Can't and talk. Quiet. I was so nervous. I was sweating. Like my arms were sweating. My palms were sweating. I just didn't know what to expect. And the thing is, this church he was carrying me is 45 minutes away from oh. my house into the countryside. Wow. And so he came to like, pick you up. Oh, wow. God is good. Man like god if this guy kidnapped me today Mm. at least i was talking to him about the bible and if i die i die talking to him about the bible right that was my mindset because he's going to the countryside that's Ah. like what he's going to the countryside where there's nobody there really oh man so we are driving for a very long time and all of a sudden i stopped seeing certain houses and Things started to look strange. And then we get to the church. The church is like this dirt road going down into somewhere. So I was like, God, Mm. he had to be from you because he's playing a cappella gospel music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is is well-dressed and he's talking about God. So Mm -hmm. I was like, he had to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. This couldn't be him kidnapping me. He had to be a Christian. Now, God knows how to get our attention, right? Because when I got to the church, there was like three sets of birds flying over the church in different colors, bright red, mm. yellow, blue. So so I started to laugh and say, this does, doesn't look like a church. This is Noah's Ark, <laughs> right? So I told him this and he was laughing and Everything just seemed so peaceful about the church. The people were happy. They were smiling. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. And I was like, what is this? I don't understand. So I just, being the actress that I am, Mm -hmm. I started to shake everybody's hand, smile. Happy Sabbath to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I got into the church, the first hymn that they sang was Trust and Obey. Mm. What's that? Number 290, Trust and Obey? I think, if I'm not mistaken. But guess what? It's a hymn I was taught as a little girl. So I sang it out loud and mm-hmm. they thought I was a seven-day Adventist. Oh. And I looked the part. 
I walk the path, I smell the path, wow. but I was not. I was not. So the the, the church, he time. know. Well, what about him? Does he know any? Does he, does he know you're not Adventist, or does he? What does he know about you? Um, no, uh, at that time. All, all he knew is that this girl was confused, searching for God, and mm. she didn't. She has not been to church regularly for some time. So okay. this was his moment to evangelize to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that was my moment to evangelize and get to know him, right. thinking I would be in a relationship with him. Right. Right? And um So the so people the, the you day, singing, you singing, the people thought that you were Adventist because you, yeah, you know that's I was Adventist. So then they asked, Sister, what church do you go to? Like which which one of the branches of Adventist churches? Mm-hmm. I said, I don't go to church. This is my first day here. Everybody eyes open. Wow. What? It was so bad. Mm-hmm. An elder from the church pulled me aside and he said, tell me the truth. Are you a spy? Did you come to spy on us? Mm. Where are, you? are you from an organization spying on us? And I said, no, I just want to know who God is. Wow. And guess what? Mm -hmm. They said, if you are serious, we are going to come by your home every Thursday and study the Bible with you. And Brother Mark, a group of them came at my home every Thursday for one year and studied studied an evangelistic study. Mm -hmm. It was 26 lessons. It took us one year to get through it because I had so many questions. Yes, 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 yes. And my family was there. They were all present. Sometimes they weren't there, but I would always make time to be there. They came at my home. Mm -hmm. And then one year later, there was a crusade. They invited me to a crusade. And that night, Mm -hmm. I was like, God, I'm convinced that your word is true. I'm convinced that the Sabbath is what you have created for us. And I'm convinced that I'm willing to give up the, my life mm-hmm, and follow mm-hmm, you now. Mm-hmm. And when that evangelist made the call, mm-hmm. all those who want to get baptized, I did not make, I did not know what was going on. My feet <laughs> started to move. I started to walk forward step by step. It was under a tent. Wow. Right. Close to that same church where I saw the birds flying. And when I got when I got to the middle and I turned back, it's like I just heard myself talking to myself in my mind. Candace, you have experienced almost everything there is to know in the world, and none of them made you feel at peace the way knowing God and His Word make you feel at peace. Why are you turning back? Mm, Don't mm, look mm, back. Mm, mm. I didn't want to be like Lot wife and and you know go back to my to the space that was imprisoning me, you know. And um I walked straight to the altar. Mm. They took my name mm-hmm. and they said, My sister, come back tomorrow, because tomorrow you're gonna be baptized. Wow. I was like, What? Serious? They spoke to the pastors, they found out I've been studying for a year. And they believe I've been attending church and they believe I am ready. So because I knew I was still struggling with certain things that I was going through, Mm -hmm. I decided not to go back home. I slept over in that same village by one of the the, the older ladies' home. She prepared a bed for me and everything, and I slept there. How long? And when I sleep, huh? How long you just one day? Yeah, one night. Mm-hmm. I stayed the same night. Because you didn't want to you didn't want to go home and have your mind changed. No, you just stayed there. I didn't there. want to go home. Mm-hmm. I didn't want anybody to change my mind. Um it so happened that of course I didn't have any clothes. So they carried me home. I packed my bag and then I left and I and I stayed that night. And the next morning they had service under the tents for the crusade. Mm-hmm. They carried me to the ocean. Mm-hmm. And I was baptized. Amen. And when I went under the water, it's almost like, (laughs) 
you have to understand, I, I have I've spent 15 plus years in theater and film. So my mind is very cinematic. My imagination is very wide. Mm -hmm. When I was under the water, it's almost like everything that I've been through felt like it was drowning. And I was now about to be a new person, mm. a new person in Christ, a new boot. And when I came out of that water, I made up my mind, Candice, do your best to never look back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, By God's mm -hmm. grace. I, I tell you, it did not get easy. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Because I got baptized in May and December came. And December is where we eat everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. And I just took an oath that I had to eat cleaner and I could not go back to eating pig. Right, right, right. And, and, I and this is, this is I said, something that's big in, your, in, your, in that culture, right? Yes. Yeah. So mm. we eat a lot of ham, we eat a lot of wild meat, we eat a lot of roast pork. Mm -hmm. And um, I told God, Lord, don't embarrass me. Please, this is the only way that I could prove to everybody mm -hmm. that I really made up my mind. And mm -hmm. because people said, Candace, the Seventh-day Adventist Church too strict. You're going to last three weeks. Mm. Somebody said, I'm gonna, you're going to last three months. You're not going to last. And I made up my mind. I said, Candace, if you could decide not to eat pig mm -hmm. this December, Take it December by December. God is going to keep you the next December and the next December and the next December. Amen. We are in 2024. I was baptized in, um, in, um, oh gosh, why am I forgetting? 20, 20, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting? 2016? Yeah, okay, 2017, yes, 2017. I'm not sure if my maths is correct, but I think this year is seven years since I've never had pig in my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that was a that was proof to me that God was really with me because there's no one in this world that loved to eat pig like mm, me. So that December, did, I'm, I'm sure you felt the pressure when that time it came. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard. I remember that year, mm -hmm. everybody went full out. The table was Oof. filled and laced with everything I loved. Wow. And all I had to do, I remember all I ate that day was a hops bread, a bun, and mustard. Mm. And that was it. That was it. And the table, here's the table full of all kinds yeah. of stuff. And in Trinidad, for all the Trinidadians, I know there are Trinidadians listening. Mm -hmm. um, hello to the Walk family. I know they are listening. In Trinidad, we have something called chow chow. So it's like pickled um, vegetables, mm -hmm. like mixed with mustard and different stuff. Mm -hmm. I pasted that on the bread because that is what we have to put on the pork, on the pig. Oh. So I just remind, I just fool my brain to say, it's in there. Just eat this. Oh. And that's how I made it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. God is good. God is good. So now here you are. Um, you're baptized. What about the at that time as you, you know, you're now part of the Seven Avenue Church? Uh, how's the uh, acting career at that time? How is it? Um, you is, is I, had that, to, mm -hmm. I had to leave it altogether because when I came in the church, there was this elderly man who said, so what do you like to do? I said, well, I'm an actress. He said, well, you know, we don't have any dramatic display in here. Mm. And when he said when he said that, I said, okay, this was a sign to just leave it all. Just leave it all. But I'm not going to lie to you. It did rub me in some sort of way because I felt God... Why would you bless me with a curse? Because I was so good at drama. I was so good at the, at the mm. arts. And, you know, but I knew God allowed me to use that gift to enter spaces to show me how far I could get 
but to let me know that that world was not for me because oh. I got experiences to travel all over the world acting. I reached as far as working on Broadway. Broadway, and when New I York. Saw, I, I was not an actress on Broadway, but I worked for a Broadway company. Mm. So I had access to all the theaters in Times Square. Wow. And when I realized the lifestyle of an actress and what they had to go through. No offense to anybody who doing acting. I know a lot of people who know me, they know me from drama. Mm -hmm. And yes, drama has been a vehicle to help me express and deal with stuff. But one thing I want you all to know is that if something is glorifying the things of the world, it's not going to be healthy for your well-being. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I had to come to that reality. I had to come to that space and it was hard because people were saying all sorts of stuff, judging me. And I remember certain pastors were saying, you are being deceived. The Sabbath is not Saturday. Mm. Um, and, I, and I felt alone because I'm the only one in my family who is a Seventh-day Adventist. And I remember there were days my family they took years and they're still adjusting to this new lifestyle for me. I remember there were times I would come home and there was pig mixed up in the food. And when I asked wow. them, is there any pig in there? Said, we no. call it pig tail. They said, yeah, they say you could just take it out and eat from us. I know <sighs> I can't. So there were days I had to skip meals. Wow. There were days I had to um, I had to give up certain jobs because I used to be paid well as an actress. I'm mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. doing different jobs, doing different shows, and people didn't understand. And I ha and I felt so bad because at a point in time, because they were like, "You really think God will give you this thing and you be so good at it to just leave it alone?" Mm. So I was struggling trying to figure that out and. Now I could realize that God allowed me to learn drama so that I could understand what it means to be in other person's shoes because right. I've played so many roles before. Uh... I have so much compassion for people. My evangelism has spread. Now I could speak to different audiences. I could speak to persons who are affected by LBGT because I've worked in LBGT communities. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be addicted to alcohol. I know what it feels like to play roles of depressed people and battered women and people who were abused. I have walked lives of 10 other women. So mm. now when God sends a woman to me, I'm not judging her because I said I know what it is to yes. be in your shoes because I've played that role to survive. Mm, 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 so mm. what the enemy means for evil, God turns it around and means it for good. Amen. And um, today, I'm still a baptized active member in the church. Amen. I still believe that... Um, God's people are identified by keeping his commandments Amen. and holding fast to his testimony and the prophecies. Um, I told persons that becoming a part of this movement, this SDA movement, has made me a better person, has mm. made me a holistic person. I did not rest before, and now I am forced to learn to rest. Amen. I was not temperate before, and now I'm f I am encouraged to be temperate because the Bible says those who strive for the mastery Must are temperate, temperate in, in all, all things. things. Not some things, but all, all things. things. That's right. Today, I'm able to explain things about the Bible that I did not know seven years ago. Hmm. I used to think my father was in a leaf. I used <sighs> to think my father was in a feather. Mm. I used to think he could still talk and travel and talk to me. But but being a part of the church, I learn about the state of the dead. And the Bible says that when man dies, his body returns to the dust, the earth, and his breath returns to God. That's because right. we are breathing and talking now and having this conversation mm -hmm. because the breath of God is in our nostrils. That's right. So I am much better off now because now I could take my Bible and actually study. Now I could actually understand that this whole life is about worship. 
Mm-hmm. Who do mm-hmm. you worship? Mm-hmm. This whole experience is about deception. I was deceived for many years. And I thought that, you know, I had a God-sized void that only God could fill. Yes. But I tried to fill it with all sorts of different things. And when you try to fill that God-sized void with everything of this world, it is like you trying to mop up the sea. Yep, can't do it. It's not gonna with a, it's with not, a strand up here. That's why not not gonna happen. Now, now let me let me go back and ask you a little bit. Like during your you know your career as an actress and you know traveling around the world, you see things. You like you know you see a lot of compromising. You, you didn't did you 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 didn't experience any uh, level of uh, uh, spiritualism like in, in this. Have you did yeah, you did. did did you come in in, in contact with anything? That that you know that you would that make you go like wow, this is deep. This is deep spiritualism. Yeah, I remember for certain roles, I had to listen to certain genres of music mm. so that I could get the energy to project this particular character. And um, wow, I remember, I remember once I was on stage and I was performing. And I felt like a spiritual being. I felt like I was unstoppable. Mm. I I was holding the audience attention so much that they I was drawing them into my will. And um people don't realize <laughs> the word media and medium mm-hmm. and all of these different things. These are just channels the enemy uses to get to our brain because the, the battle is for the mind with the mind. And yep. I remember I used to, um, I remember I, I was, I wouldn't say I was, at the time, this is how I understand it, right? Mm-hmm. This is how I'm going to explain it. I believe that I was not possessed by demons, but I was oppressed. So mm. I believe that I dabbled in a lot of demonic and evil things that these demons would play with me. They would they would come and hang around me, and I remember... There was one particular time I believed that I had an alter ego mm. where um, <laughs> I, 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 I forgot her name. I even named you, named her. You named her? Yeah. Not like Beyonce does. <laughs> yeah, I named her and I forgot her name. Thank God. I don't even want to go back there. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I named her and she used to seduce men to get what she wanted. Mm-hmm. So... I, I had this persona to the T that I would get people to, I would get men to do whatever I wanted. Right, right, so, right. You know, and um, I would seduce them in such a way that they would fall in love with me and give me all the attention. Mm-hmm. But anytime they wanted to take things further, probably in a sexual way, I would snap out of it and I would start crying and I would start trying to make them believe I'm depressed so that they will leave me alone. And that was me all the time, switching, switching from this person to that person, switching. And, um, yeah, I used, it was, it was very uncontrollable. And I realized, um, somebody told me, Candace, I don't know who you are, but somebody took my friend. You traveled and you never came back the same again. Mm. And I, they said, every time they saw me, my features looked different. When I talked to them, I sung different. And I didn't know. I just think they, they were just being extra. They mm-hmm, were mm-hmm, exaggerating. Mm-hmm. But I truly believe I was slowly um, bargaining with the devil at <sighs> a point in time. Because I felt that... Um, my father was no longer wrong. And I said, I'm watching all these young ladies, their fathers buying them vehicles, right. new phones. Right. They have inheritance of houses. And I had nothing. I had nothing. Um, but it would, I don't even know how we're doing for time. I don't even know what's going on. But I know there are certain things that I really want to share. <laughs> Um, about it, but I don't want to go off track and um, too much. But no, no, what- no. Listen, 
you know whatever yeah. the Lord puts upon your heart share with us listen we don't yeah. we don't have to we don't have to rush it we we can always do part two because there's a lot more we want to touch but you can talk listen whatever the Lord puts upon your heart share with us as long as you feel comfortable sharing go ahead share with us and we have to you know do a part two of this that's not a problem at all okay yeah because I'm not even reached to where I am right now and everything like that. But um, I went through a, re- a lot of darkness. Um, and I know that in all of this, like if I was to see my guardian angels now, mm. their wings probably broken and damaged because <laughs> they tried to protect me from so, so much. much. Huh. I ended up in a lot of spaces I should not have been. I've seen a lot of stuff I should not have seen. And um, Hmm. I just was really, really searching for God. I think even in in my years of Adventism, I still struggle with, would I even make something of myself, Lord? Because all I know is you now. I've given up my career. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to, you know, find back and, and I, my identity. I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but all I knew is that I was free from the alcohol because I knew I took a, when you, when you baptize, you have to say, you're no longer going to drink, yes, you're no longer yes. going to smoke. Mm-hmm. And um, taking that oath and that promise to God really helped. Cause I said, I made up my mind. If I going into this, I'm doing it and I'm not going to, you know, um, but in between there, again, the enemy uses offense as a bait to catch us. <sighs> I remember in church, they made me a AY leader. For those who don't know, AY means Adventist Youth Leader. Mm-hmm. And um, they gave me opportunities to present. And I was, you know, leading out with the great controversy and mm-hmm. doing all these studies. And one day I was preaching because I love to speak. So I said, Lord, if I can't act on stage, I am going to present and do my best in your church. Mm-hmm. So I started to preach and I started to share presentations and I was very dramatic about it too. And then one day I spoke about Satan being the first narcissist, right? Mm. And I explained why he was a narcissist and that nothing is new under the sun. That's right. You know, and um, that he wanted us to have a character different from what the character of God was. And after I shared, a particular elder walked up to me and he said, he said something that offended me. Mm. And I turned to him and I said, you just see me share my heart and soul. And all you could have picked up was that one thing. Mm. Yeah. So, oh, um, man. Yeah. I I don't want to say what it is because whoever listening, they would know. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I just... But I was talking about Jesus and I was talking about, you know, Jesus was not something, someone that, you know, people would, he was this big superstar or glamorous guy, you know, he was very humble. And the elder was, you know, correcting me on certain things I said. And I said, you know what? I'm fed up of this. I'm trying my best to be in church and I'm just going to forget about this. Mm. And then I stopped, I stopped going to church for a few Sabbaths. And then I was invited to a gathering. And this gathering, I believe, was a group of Seventh-day Adventists who disagreed with certain stuff that was teaching oh. in church. And oh. I joined the gathering because I felt at home. I mm. felt like they accepted me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they were studying. Like they were not just walking with their hymnal Bible and quarterly. Mm-hmm. They were walking with a book bag of books mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. Ellen White. Mm-hmm. They were walking with, with research from the early parts of our church history. Mm-hmm. And that's when I got to learn about the pillars of our faith. If you were to drop a poll right now, and seven day Adventists are listening and you ask them what are the pillars of our faith? Many of them won't know. And I started to feel very puffed up. Mm. I was like, I didn't need to be a part of God's organized church anymore. I didn't need to be going to the regular church. Mm. I found a community and I am going to strive here. 
Let, let's let's take a pause. Let's take a pause there because 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 there's so much. I I I I want to make sure that we're we absorbing this. We let this marinate because this is good. So look, I'm, I I know we have a whole lot more to say, but I'm 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 trying my best here to to. <laughs> We, we don't want to rush it. We want to make sure we get everything possible. Now, um, let me interject here a little bit, uh, folks, you're watching. If you have questions, um, please feel free uh, to put the question in the chat. Because what I'm what I'm thinking now is, I know you have a lot more to share. I mean, we haven't gotten into ministry. We haven't gotten into all these other stuff uh, that the Lord is now, you know, using you to do. And I feel... Um, and I got questions based on what you've already said. And so don't worry about the time. Like I said, we can, uh, it's probably be best to do a part two of this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably, I, just, I don't even know what's going on right now. Yeah, I know. I know. I, 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 want, I think it's best if we do, we're going to do a part two of this because the rest is so, is so good that we, 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 we don't want to have to rush you know, and to get yeah. to it, because where you were, where you talking about now is so important. That part you're talking about right now is so important. Uh, and, and I, and, and I want people to understand this. I want people to understand it many a time since, let me tell you saints, folks, uh, young people are leaving the church and all of that stuff. Sometimes it's, it's, it's because of us, the way we're, we don't know how to address people. And, and, yeah. and, and sometimes we offend people. You got what I'm saying? Because there are people in the church, they're, they're making an effort to be there. And mm-hmm. the, 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 the very, the, the smallest thing can get them, can get them discouraged. And that was your case. Yeah. That was your case. And you think, you think about it, you are out here in the church, you, you left a whole career uh, where you were, you know, you were very well off, really. And you came to the church, you, you accepted the message, and here you are, you know, uh, folks are, uh, uh, the devil's using people to kind of, in a way, discourage you. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you this, based on experience, every time you're discouraged about what the church is doing or something that's happening wrong in the church, there's always another group of people ready to kind of like embrace you. You got what I'm saying? Kind of like embrace mm-hmm. you. So this is exactly where you uh, where I could see uh, yours was going. So now you with you you're with this part of the little church, but uh, you you with this uh, little group. But before you get to that, there's a question uh, uh, because I this part and the rest of it we probably can do it in part two. But yeah. what you talked about before, there's some que- there's a question about it uh, that uh, I wanted to make sure I ask it. I didn't want to forget it, okay? Because I think this is important. Because many people dealing with the idea of you know two personality. Uh, yeah. You were doing this because you were an actress. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know how to do this. But let me tell you this: when Jesus was talking in Matthew 23, he was saying, um, uh, "You scribe and Pharisee, hypocrite! You do this, you do that. You, you know." You you clean outside of the cup. The inside is 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 uh, full of dead men, bone, and all kinds of stuff. Jesus was saying the word, the Greek word here is act is actor. The word for hypocrite is actor. So you were an in in, in real life or an actor, so you know how to put up a you know you knew how to do this. You know you know show people one side, but you really is really that. But let me tell you, us as Christians, we got to be so careful that. We are consistent. We are the same thing every time. Wherever we go, we are mm-hmm. that one person. We are don't we don't have an alter ego, you know, where you act one way in, in this, this place and you somewhere else you act differently. So this idea of multiple personality, this is something that's very important. People struggle yeah. with it. You know, people struggle with it differently. So there's a question I wanted to and folks, any questions you have, please put them in the chat. There's a question here I wanted you to touch a little bit very briefly. Okay. And and folks, we'll go, before we finish, we'll Make sure we share the books because she she's written a book, and we'll talk about that more in part two, okay? But mm-hmm. I'll I'll make sure that you know uh, wherever you're watching us from that you can go and actually get the book. Maybe it'd be best to read the book, and then now when part two comes, it will make even more sense to you, okay? So the question is, is it possible that multiple personality can be a permanent thing for those who pursue a career in acting? What do you think based on your experience? Do you think 
because when you an actor, you are taking on different personality that's not you. Mm-hmm. Can this be like permanent? Can can you become that person? Yeah. What do you think? So there's something in acting that calls it's called switch off. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not the that's not the official term, but that's the term we use. So um, it's called the rolling. Thank you, Lord. That's the that's the, that's the rule. Um, the true terminology. So after you do a performance, you have to do a process of the rolling where you go through a series of exercises and questions and journaling that helps you get back to your original self. Who asks these you questions? Spent, Who asks these questions? Huh? You ask these questions in your mind or somebody else is asking you these questions? How does it, that work? It can, it can be a guided process by the director or you can hmm. do it as an actor. Like it is your responsibility to switch out of the role so that you can go back to your original self and prepare for your next role. So, uh-huh. um, <laughs> now yeah. you, ha- you have to understand, so, you have to understand. I mean, go ahead and finish what you're saying. Cause I got something else I want to say. Go so ahead. What happened is the roles that I used to get were women who were abused, mm-hmm. women who were, um, cursed at, women who were depressed, mm-hmm. um, a lot of mental health issues. Those were the roles I got and I played them well. Mm-hmm. I played them well. But what happened is, um, I got so close to the character that they gave me strength. So I never derailed. So I was just collecting characters and building and building and building. So you never let go of them? No. Mm. No. I felt Ow. like I put so much work in developing them. Letting go would be letting go part of me. It mm. was like throwing the baby and the bathwater. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Now, I understand. I know this must be very tough for you to even talk about this. And and, and, and please forgive us. And I, I know it has to be tough. You know, you know, something that you used to do in a past life and God has, you mm-hmm. know, turned your life around and having to talk about this, I know it's tough. But I feel like this area, it's of this area. That's why I wanted to uh, 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 focus and on this. I know this. I get a lot of licks for it too, but it is what it is. This is my experience. Yes. Oh, no, definitely. This is your experience. This is, yeah. it's not like you're, it's not like you're um, uh, condemning anybody. You got what no. I'm saying? You, it's not like you're condemning anybody. You, you know where God took you. And and just like God was working with you, he's, he's working with everyone else. And you're not setting mm-hmm. yourself up as a judge. You, 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 you're not uh, uh, saying, well, these folks are lost. That, that's not what you're saying. You're only giving mm-hmm. the experience that the Lord has. Uh, you're only sharing that experience with others. So that's all, you, yeah. that's all you're doing. And, and I think, yeah, I think what happened too, we need to understand um, when God gives you a gift, and you don't use it for his glory, it can become damaging. It can become destroying. So your, your gift in the wrong environment and serving the wrong person or giving the wrong glory to the wrong person, it can become very, very damaging. And um, based on your question, we know of, I believe his name is Heath Ledger. I could be wrong. The guy who played the Joker, Mm-hmm. He got into the role so much that he was really going through a lot with depression and everything. Oh. So much so that he committed suicide. So there are a lot of persons wow. who they get so deep into the role that it has taken over their identity. And that's what the enemy wants to do. Take over your identity in Christ, give you a faulty identity, and then rob you from the freedom of who God created you to be. And that's what happened. So there are persons who get so deep into it. So for instance, there are people who we see on on TV, Mm -hmm. actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. After they play a particular role, we could never see them the same way again because they did it so well. And then sometimes... Oh, you are right about this. Yeah, you, we don't see them the same way again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, if, mm-hmm. if Denzel Washington was to play a murderer or abusive person, that's the last thing we have of him, mm. you know? And again, this whole life that we are living 
it is to ma the character of God. It's mm. to ma. It's to ma who we were designed it to be. Designed to be. The Bible says, "By beholding, you become changed." Yes. So the deeper you behold a role, you are changed to become that person. Yes. Even though you are not on stage. So <laughs> most of my life, I lived on stage, and I never came off the stage until mm. I was baptized. Wow. Wow, this is deep stuff. Wow. And 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 so you when you were baptized, you left this uh lifestyle. Mm -hmm. did, did you not get tempted to go back to it? I'm sure you because yeah. once you get once you once you are baptized, um it, it, you now what happened is when you make a public declaration, because baptism, that's what baptism is. Baptism is a public declaration that I'm choosing God. Mm -hmm. Okay, as you as my witness, uh, today I'm yeah. choosing God. That's what baptism is. Mm -hmm. uh, so you making that declaration, I'm sure it, 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 you now array yourself against the 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 host of darkness. So Satan isn't going mm -hmm. to just sit back and just let you do your mm -hmm. thing and just everything smooth. No, it's not going. That's not going to happen. In fact, that's war. You declaring war on mm -hmm. the devils on the devil's army once you get baptized. So I'm sure you had a, t a tough time and hard times, I'm sure. How was it like, here you are, you know, you you were traveling all over the world, you know, being a star, a movie star, you were doing, you were doing well for yourself, you know, you know, you know, you know from a worldly perspective, of course. And now you choose to be a Seventh Adventist. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. How was it? Wasn't so you, actually, were you tempted to go back? How was that? So actually, um, when I got baptized, 2019 came, and that is when I got the up the call to come and work on Broadway. And I told God, mm. Lord, I am going to be a Seventh-day Adventist in that environment, and I'm going to prove to people that I could be in that environment and still be a Seventh-day Adventist. Oh. So when I got the interview, they said, Candice, do you have anything that you need to tell us that we need to be aware of? I said, sure. I will work every day except on Sabbath. Mm. So from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday, I wouldn't work, but mm -hmm, I'm going mm -hmm. to work every single day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they said, okay, well, Saturday is when, you know, most of our activities happen and <laughs> Friday nights and rehearsals and shows, but we'll figure something out. It so happened that I was paired with another person and she held my shift on the Sabbath while I got to church. But guess what? 2019 was the first year I came to the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. I came as a student and I came as an intern to work on Broadway as well. When I land, I, I told myself, I said, Candice, this is a new place. Nobody knows you. Mm -hmm. To keep yourself accountable, find the nearest Seventh-day Adventist church. Mm. So all I remembered, the flight was, the flight, I was tired. I got into the apartment. I took out my GPS because I arrived on a Sabbath mm. to the place. Took out my GPS, found the nearest Seventh-day Adventist church, got on a, a bus, and I went. When I entered the church, divine service was over, but I knew this was going to be the church I would go to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I was not working at the theater, I was actually given Bible studies in a train station. And mm. while I was given Bible studies at the train station, um, I remember... As soon as sun would set on a Saturday, well, as soon as sun would set and that would be Sunday for us, I had to rush home, take a shower and go to work because that mm. was a promise. That was a promise. And then I was like, Candace, how long I could keep up with this for? Sooner or later, they are going to call for you to come out. Right. And um, there were moments they called for me and I said, no, I'm not going to come. I'm not going to come. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was it was a bad look for me because yes. they could have chosen other persons and they chose me. And then 
one day I was at work and somebody came on the elevator, muscular, strong. Mm -hmm. But they were wearing a skirt. Whoa. And I didn't understand what was going on. And when I looked on the door, the bathroom read, all genders welcome. Mm, 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 and that's mm. when I realized, no, that wasn't, that wasn't it. I remember I was in a room with high school students trying to tell them stuff about behind the scenes and stuff like that. And I said, okay, we're going to do an activity. All the boys on the right, all the girls on the left. And I turned my back and I was writing on the board. Mm -hmm. And when I turned back, there were some girls to the right, some boys to the left, and a group of people in the middle. And I was like, why y'all didn't move? Why mm -hmm. y'all didn't separate? Mm -hmm. We don't identify <laughs> as the gender we call. Yeah. And when that happened, I knew I was in trouble. So I said, here's what, y'all stay in a group by yourself. I didn't, I'm not going to separate you all at all. Wow. And, um... It was just one thing after the other that just did not feel right. By the way, I love these people. I I ate with them. Mm -hmm. I hanged out with them. Mm -hmm. But I knew that this is not what God wanted for them. Mm -hmm. And this is not what God wanted for me. So I believe God gave me the opportunity to prove to me, here's what. I'm going to give you what you believe you want. Mm -hmm. And you make a decision there. Wow. And I was well paid. I ate well. I hanged out in A-list parties, hmm. seeing stars, the bright lights, everything. But I knew that I would have to pay a price. Yeah. Which I was not willing to pay. Right. You never got to a point. Of, have you ever? <clears throat> so when you made that arrangement with them, say, hey, you know, Saturday is the one day I can't work. There was never a time where I they. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Like your whole voice changed. Like I hear you robotic, but I'm going to try my best to hear what you're going to say. The this the the I don't think the internet is stable. Yeah. Oh, so go ahead. you you're not hearing me well. Oh, you're coming back now. Okay, yeah, good. Praise the Lord. Okay, good, good, good. So my question is, um, uh, you made the arrangement with them that you cannot work on Saturday. H has there ever been a time where they press on you that, hey, we have no choice, you have to come work on Saturday? I think there was um, the compromise happened where I was not respecting the edges of the Sabbath. Mm. So... Even though I was not in the building, I was still in the lobby area waiting for the sun to go down to go to work. So my mind was not on God or mm -hmm, the Sabbath. Mm -hmm, I just mm -hmm. felt I spent majority of the day with God and he would be pleased enough. I yeah. got you. I got this. This is very important what you just mentioned. Folks, those of us watching out there, listen to this. We need to guard the edges of the Sabbath. What does that mean? If the sunset is at, let's say, 6.30, okay, sunset 6.30, we can't be, it can't be 6 o'clock and we still, you know, we, 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 we already, you know, have our church, uh, our work clothes on and we're getting ready to look at the time and say, okay, okay, it's almost time. Once it's time in, you out. What that does mentally, you, you had already checked out. Mm -hmm. So it's good to guard the edges of the Sabbath, okay? And that is why one um, uh, one thing that you can do that would help even to open and close the Sabbath is uh, when you're opening the Sabbath, you start singing and, and studying and you do all of that before the sunset. So let the sunset catch you doing these things and this will help you so much. So let sunset catch you already singing and studying and, and praying. Let sunset catch you doing that. Don't wait for the sun to set. Then go do that because you're not going to run. Uh, you run the risk of not guarding the edges of the Sabbath. You understand what I'm, I'm sure you out there understand what I'm saying. Okay. So there's another question. So I'm going to, there's another question that just came through here uh, from our, our good friend, Cam, Ken. 
He says, um, hmm, where is it? okay, there it is. My question is, what if you use drama as a ministry? Hmm. Can you do drama ministry that um for God that God that does glory God? I guess that glorify God. That's what the person yeah, means. Sure. Yeah. Can you do drama so, ministry that glorify God? I felt drama ministry uh, was an outlet for me and has ministered mm-hmm. to people. What are your thoughts? Hmm. Right. So can it also did the same for me? Because when my father died. I joined drama ministry and that was a way for me to deal with my depression and grief. Mm -hmm. What I am going to say is this. All I have is my individual experience. Mm -hmm. I know nothing else. Do I still struggle with drama and doing a career? Yes, Mm -hmm. I do. Sometimes I'm wondering, God, could I turn it around? Because look at Mel Gibson. He did The Passion of the Christ. That was something important. A lot of people, there's the chosen, there's a lot of these biblical um, stories reenacted around the supposedly Easter time. Mm -hmm. But I am saying this, as for me and my salvation, it is not a part that I could continue to dabble in um, because it is a point of weakness for me it's a point of the enemy manipulating my mind mm. and I cannot be trusted in those environments. So for me to say that drama cannot be used for ministry or not, I I, can't, I, I, I would want God to tell you the answer for yourself because me telling you will come from a very biased place because this is just my experience. Have, do I believe drama has helped a lot of people? Yes. Um, do I believe that what God created, the enemy has tampered with? Yes. Mm. Do I believe that persons understand the proper use of drama and what it was designed for? I don't, I'm not fully persuaded. And I don't think persons are aware of when they embody a particular role how to deal with it. Because a lot of people who do drama in church, they are not trained actors. They are not um, trained to know the theory and the practice of this craft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And anything, anything, any craft that is not properly guided by the Spirit of God um, will definitely be used for something that will damage and destroy us. Just as music, is all music glorifying to God? Nope. Does music music help people? Yes. Yep. Is music positive? Yes. Is all music positive? No. Nope. Art. Is art positive? Of course. Mm -hmm. In the great controversy, there were two individuals who drew certain things and persons were able to see the, the paintings and be saved. Mm. And we understand God. But guess what? There's also an art that could be used to glorify the devil. Right. So I cannot answer that question in its entirety. What I do know is that the time and the hour is short. And what we need to do is to stick to the old landmarks, the old way marks. Mm -hmm. What Mm -hmm. is that? Using the Bible of using the Bible, using scripture, using the writings of the prophet, using everything that was inspired by the Spirit of God mm-hmm. to further the gospel. That's right. And guess what? Brother Mark is using technology to bring information to us. Social media was used for me to find out about Sabbath. So of course people will be able to say. Well, it's based how you use it. But guess what? The devil is not playing games with us. Oh, no. And deception is so real. <sighs> deception is plenty truth with a drop of error. So guess what? I don't fully understand the world of drama. So I'm going to stay on the side of caution. And I'm going to use my voice, which I learned how to use well in drama at that mm-hmm. point in time, to preach the gospel. 
and I'm going to use the gift of playwriting to write books, to glorify God. So my thing is, ask the Lord, what aspect of this, Lord, can I use to bring glory to your name? Right. If it doesn't glorify you, Lord, get rid of it. And that is where I am at. Because just guess what? The Bible says, what would it profit a man mm. to gain the whole world and for him to lose his soul? Yes. Brethren, I am not playing in these rungs because the hourglass, soon the last grain of sand is about to drop in earth's history. And we need to decide where we are at. My brother, Ken, I, I think that's your name. I cannot answer that question for you. There are certain things could only be found out through prayer and fasting mm -hmm. and seeking God. For me to answer that, I would be misleading you because I myself don't know where to stand with this thing. It is so powerful. Everything, everything in this world, <laughs> it is designed to trap us. It makes us believe that we are doing right until one moment we realize we have lost our way. Yes. So for now, for now, I choose to stay on the side of caution and just immerse myself in the word of God and just ask him to guide me because I am undone. There's many things for me to learn, many things to unlearn. And if for some reason anything that I'm saying here goes against what the Lord wants me to say or what he believes his word says, God forgive me. But for now, the Bible says, work out your own salvation in fear yes. and trembling. Amen. And that's what I intend to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Saints, oh, uh, we could do this literally. We could go another two hours, but we won't do, we mm -hmm. will not do that because we have, there's so much more uh, that we have not touched. Um, but I want to make sure quickly, um, I want to uh, share with you if you're watching out there, um, I know we didn't get to the part, and I will bring you another part, a part two of this, because we're not done. But we didn't get mm -hmm. to that part, uh, um, uh, the the part where he talks about, where she didn't get to talk about her book. She has a whole book that she pulled out. So you can go to uh, uh, the stretch. The stretch out life. Yes, stretchoutlife.com. You could go. To that website and you can order that book you can get that book there and that book will give you even more you know all the, the details that uh, you know, we don't have the time to cover uh, you can definitely go on there and get that okay so that's that's very very important and uh, if you on Amazon if you were to go on Amazon and looking for the book you would be looking for something like this. Okay. So this is what you need to look for. Um, you'll find that, um, on Amazon and, 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 and on, uh, on the website as well. So that's the book. So what, what I would highly recommend you do folks, uh, is if possible, you can get that book and then read it. And then when we come back for the part for the second part of this, then things will, will definitely make more sense to you. And also, um, also, um, you can get in contact with our sister here, Sister Candice. Um, uh, if 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 uh, well, these things that she, the experience that she has is so important and so crucial because we have so many of our young people right now, um, dabbling into these things because not knowing where these things will lead. But she's been through uh, a lot. I mean, as you can see from the two-hour testimony we've had so far. She's been through a lot and God has uh, taken her from far. So she can be an inspiration for your church. You know, uh, and that's what she, the, you know, that's part of, that's part of, in the second part, we'll talk about this more. And that's one of the things mm -hmm. that she's doing now is, is to uh, be able to go out to different churches and, and, and share uh, not only testimony, but, you know, talk on the mental, mental health uh, side of things, because this is important to her. This is very important to her. So uh, do that. If Saints, if you want to get in contact and give us give us the website again, uh, again, sis, sister, give us the website if somebody want to contact you. 
Yeah, it's thestretchedoutlife.com mm -hmm. and you can email me at um, thestretchedoutlife at gmail.com and um, I want to guide persons to um, Mark, to this guy, Eli Gori. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correct, but it's spelled E-L-I-G-O-R-E-E. -E. Mm -hmm. This guy... His career is 10 times greater than mine. Like mm. he has he has been in films, um, blockbuster movies, all these things. And guess what? He made it far until they decided to change his contract. Mm. And he, he had to work on the Sabbath. So wow. if you think what I'm saying is minor, because you probably never saw me on a screen before, go and look at his testimony on YouTube. Type in his his. I think he was interviewed on the Little Light Ministries. Mm -hmm. Go follow him on Instagram, and he's telling you that he was blacklisted from Hollywood. Blacklisted. What is his name? He cannot. Huh? What what's that? What's his name again? E L I G O R E E. That's very Eli important. Eli Gorey, or I think it's Gorey or Gorey. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but. He cannot go and act in Hollywood anymore. Mm. And he was going to get a very big role oh, in, him. Okay, in I Black know who. Panther and all these different things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, so yes. if, you think, if you think my experience is minor, because hmm. you probably didn't see me next to Denzel, go and look at him. And I'm trying to tell you that there's coming a time when... There are certain things God wanted for us, but it has been contaminated by the enemy yes. and his kingdom. Yes. And because of the contamination, he cannot allow us to um, be a part of it. I got a lot, a lot of um, hate from, you know, friends and family who was like, God created the pig. Why not eat it? Guess what? The Bible says it is not good for you. That's right. It's a scavenger. And God is not saying, I don't want you to live your best life. He's saying, here's what, I want you to live the abundant life. And I know because of sin, from the time sin entered stage left, everything that was good exit stage right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you didn't hear anything that I said, remember this tonight. God is more interested in your soul salvation than you living a life full of pleasure every single day, 24-7. And that's the reason why I wrote The Stretched Out Life. Because The Stretched Out Life, and we'll talk about this in part two some more, but I don't know if I'll be able to see you all again, the audience that is listening now. But it is a life where we have to embrace the trials as training for mm, our salvation. Mm, mm. And the last position Christ died was stretched out with his arms stretched wide. He said, I love you this much. Why would you want the world? So I'm telling you, yes. it is time to get out of not just the cities, but it's time to get out of some of these Babylonian ways mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 and bondage mm -hmm. areas. I don't know what that might look like for you, but God has to reveal it himself. But I want you to know there's not time, much time again, to decide what side you are on. This is not in the river, on the bank. Yeah. One foot in, one foot out. We need to make a decision of where we stand and who we worship. Because guess what? In a perfect environment, war broke out and one third of angels fell. Mm -hmm, these perfect mm -hmm, beings. Mm -hmm. So who are we? Mm. If it was possible, even the very elect will be deceived. Yes. So I just want to share with us tonight, there are things in our life, things in our homes, things we listen to, things we watch, things we eat, things we say, people we hang out with, is going to determine which age we end up in. Heaven or hell, you decide. Yep. The Bible says... There's life and death. Choose life. Amen. So that's what I choose. Amen. I choose life and life is Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For those watching on YouTube, we have the link 
uh, the website on on YouTube and check it out. And 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 you, if you see the if for those of you that saw the image on the book, you saw uh, the name is Andrews, but the name is not Andrews anymore. So that's for part two. Okay, we'll mm-hmm. get into that in part two. We'll talk more ministry, mm-hmm. uh, part two. And remember, um, if if you're watching this and let's say you were a leader, you were a youth leader in your church, or let's say you were in charge of a department in your church and you want to have those kind of testimony at your church, you want to bring somebody in that can you know, help uh, teach the youth because the youth, they're, they're, they don't know about these things. You want to bring them, you bring somebody to help teach the youth mm-hmm. about the danger of these things. So you can reach out to, to our sister here and... Um, She'd be uh, she'd be more than happy to uh, to accommodate and 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 do God's work because that's that's the work that the Lord has given her. And you can contact you get in contact if it's easier to get in contact with me. Go ahead and do that, and I'll, I'll put you in contact with our sister here. Not not a part of metal. So so Saint, we're gonna stop here for tonight. But again, this is only part one. We'll definitely <laughs> um uh we'll do more. We'll do more next time. We'll we'll get into more details. There's some things. There's some more questions. Uh, folks have uh, we'll definitely make sure that we're um, getting to them uh, in part two so I just want to give you a minute or two sisters to give us a last word of encouragement uh, Mm because you've been through a lot Uh, folks are dealing with you know there's a lot of people out there dealing with the same thing you you dealt with depression and all kinds of things if you were to give uh, a word of encouragement to someone out there uh, who's watching and who may be dealing mm-hmm. with the same thing, or maybe in the same position that you were in, uh, or words of encouragement for somebody out there before before we close, sister. I want to share two script passages of scripture. The first one says, "Do not be concerned of who could destroy the body, mm-hmm. but be concerned of who could destroy both the body and the soul." Yes. And the second, the second one is, "Let this mind be in you, mm-hmm. as it was in Christ Jesus." I don't care what happens, guard your mind with everything because it is your mind that you will make a decision Mm -hmm. for your salvation. If you you lose an arm, you lose a a leg, you lose an eyebrow, you lose hair, just know all of that is going to vanish away. What you need is your robe and the righteousness of Christ. And right now, you need to just repent and say, Lord, there's nothing this world could offer me. And I could tell you firsthand, there's nothing this world could offer me because this same world is going to be destroyed very soon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just like the persons who were eating and drinking and giving in marriage in Noah's time, there's a door that is going to be shut. And when it's shut, no one could open it and no one can pray in a different language to make it open. So don't be deceived. Study the Bible for yourself. Yes. Get to know the Lord in a personal and deep way. Mm. And whatever you need to let go of, just know that Christ let go all of heaven just so you and I could be saved. So there's nothing on this earth worth missing a lifetime and eternity but the one that truly loves us, Jesus Christ. So those who are going through something, some mental health issue or challenge, depression, you're thinking about killing yourself, just know that there is hope. Yes. Our hope is Christ, our righteousness. And there's hope because I am talking to you in my right mind, Mm -hmm. not on any drugs, Mm -hmm. not on any substance. Yes. And my body and my mind is brand new. And if he could do it for me, he could do it for you too. So hold on. Change is coming and faith is a victory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, ah, I didn't want to finish, but I have to. I have to finish. Saints, I pray that you were blessed by this as I was. I pray that you were as you were blessed by this as I was, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord, sister. I I, I can't even thank you enough. Mm. I can't even thank you enough. The Lord has given you a powerful testimony, and you yeah. were willing. 
to come on and share this with others what a blessing what a mm. blessing i know people that are watching live right now and those who will be watching later on they're going to have questions saints if you have questions you can again mm-hmm. s- send them no problem i'm sure we don't have all the answers but you can send your question mm-hmm. if you want to get in contact direct contact you want to get direct counseling you want to have one-on-one with our sister here no problem contact her contact us we'll make it happen and again if you want that for your church which i think is priceless you want that mm-hmm. kind of uh, a teaching that kind of uh, experience shared with your church you know definitely get in contact with us since we're going to stop here we want to thank everybody thank mm-hmm. you all for for joining and for watching we we are so happy that the uh, you know uh that you were with us tonight we praise god for the opportunity to be able to do this you know um and i really am very grateful to sister candice here uh, for her willingness to come on and share so saints thank you everybody thank you for watching um we're gonna do part two of this we're gonna do part two of this uh so stay tuned stay tuned um stay connected with us and we'll be sure to let you know exactly when we'll do it we come and do part two and we'll give you even more information than what she was she was able to share with you today so saints thank you once again uh before we close i'd like to say a word of prayer let us close our eyes and let's pray heavenly father oh lord i'm so thankful to you lord ah, how you are a great god you love us we see it every day what a powerful testimony what a testimony lord wow wow you are good we can see it in the in this testimony i see it i can see it so father please i know you continue to you continue to work with our sister continue to give us strength this is not an easy life at all lord i pray you continue to shield her uh her along with her family lord please protect them set a hedge around them a hedge of protection father please be with those watching I pray that they would go and analyze these what was said because this was so powerful. Lord, I'm so thankful. Blessed be your name, Lord. Be with us as we now separate from one another. Continue to guide and keep us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, Thank you once again, sister. Thank you very much uh, for the time. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you again, God willing next friday so thank you everybody we'll see you next time sister thank you again god bless you thank you